Hi everybody, Ryan Jackson here. I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code. We're still in Article 502. We have one more topic to talk about and that is ceiling in Class 2 Division 1 and Division 2 locations, 502.15. Okay, so the change here in 502.15 is electrical ceiling putty is now allowed. And, and really, I probably ought to revise that to say electrical ceiling putty is now specifically allowed. Uh, it's always been allowed. It just wasn't quite as clear. So when we talk about ceiling in a class two location, if you're familiar with class one locations, you're, you're probably very much familiar with seal fittings and explosion proof sealing, uh, seal offs and you know packing it in there with the, uh, with the backing material and then pouring liquid in, letting it set. Uh, an explosion proof seal fitting is not what we're talking about here in Article 502. Like I just said, you can use electrical sealing putty. So you grab a handful of putty and stuff it in the pipe. That's it. That's the way you seal a raceway in a class two location. So I think a lot of people get really carried away with how they seal things in a class two location. Let me show you an example. Just, just take a look at the picture here before we even read it. I've got coal dust. That's kind of the, the black film that you can see the, the overall the equipment here. Now bear in mind, this is at a facility that was built in 1983. So it, it's 40 plus years old. So it, it really is in good shape. I know we see all the black around and it's like, oh, it's filthy. No, it's not. It's actually extraordinarily clean for a coal facility that's 40 years old. But here's the thing, in this exact example, this has both class one and class two materials in it. So this specific installation is addressing the concerns of flammable gases and vapors and combustible dust. If this was just a class two location, I would tell you that we have wasted a lot of money in this installation. But let's take a peek at what it says. It says, look, for class two, divisions one and two, a ceiling is required for raceways between enclosures that are required to be dust ignition proof and enclosures that are not required to be dust ignition proof. One of the following methods is going to be used. All right, look, I'm just going to be honest, and I, I, I don't like this, but in Article 502, Class 2 locations, the code does not do a great job of telling you when a dust ignition proof enclosure is required. Uh, I'm going to tell you that in a, in a Class to division one. Any make and break contact like a switch should be in a dust ignition proof enclosure. Now again, the code isn't perfectly clear on that, but I feel very confident in saying that that's what should be happening. All right, if you're in a class two division one location, that means that you probably have ignitable concentrations of, of combustible dust suspended in the air under normal conditions. Holy cow. Anything goes wrong when you have a suspension of combustible dust, you're going to have an explosion. So we take that very seriously. So class two division one, make and break contact should be in a dust ignition proof enclosure. I have to seal a raceway that goes between a dust ignition proof enclosure and a non dust ignition proof enclosure. All right. So here's an example over on the right. Well, we, we can see both of these are switches and those are indeed dust ignition proof enclosures. Now, if we move our eyes over here to the right, let me get my highlighter out here. If I come up from this dust ignition proof enclosure and I go up to this junction box, that is a dust ignition proof enclosure on the bottom and just a typical junction box up above. In a class two location, that junction box only has to be dust tight. It doesn't have to be dust ignition proof and it certainly does not need to be explosion proof like the like we're showing here in the picture. But again, some people take uh, division uh, class two locations and they kind of wire them like they're class one and, and that's a mistake. Not only is it often a waste of money, but sometimes it, it doesn't satisfy the requirements. You know, when you look at Article 502, it says explosion proof equipment is not permitted in a class two location unless it's also identified for a class two location. So please don't think that class one equipment is better than class two equipment. It's not better, it's just different, all right? So we've got explosion proof equipment, but it's also listed as dust ignition proof. Cool, put it in. 
but if it's not listed for class two, we can't use it. All right, so dust ignition proof switch on the bottom right, non dust ignition proof enclosure up top. That means I have to seal between those two raceways. Now, how do I do it? Option one says I can use a permanent and effective seal. Certainly a seal fitting like this is a permanent and effective seal that complies. That's probably a lot more than would ever be necessary, but it does comply. What are my other options here? Well, options two through five are specific. Now let's take a look at the installation here before we read the, the requirements. Down here on the bottom, I have what? Dust ignition proof enclosures. As I move my eyes up, I have just a splice box. That is not required to be dust ignition proof. That only needs to be dust tight in a class two division one location. All right. so. Going from dust tight down to dust ignition proof, have to seal that raceway. How can I seal it? Well, number number two, number one was you know, a permanent effective seal. Number two says a horizontal raceway that's at least 10 feet long. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you have a dust ignition proof enclosure on the left and a dust tight enclosure on the right, as long as you have 10 feet between them, you're done. You don't have to do anything at all. The length of that raceway is the seal. And then item three says, well, you can also use a vertical raceway that's at least five feet long. If it travels downward from the dust ignition proof enclosure down to the dust tight enclosure. All right, we can't do it the other way around. If we have the dust tight enclosure above and the dust ignition proof enclosure below, then you still have to seal it. So looking again at the photograph, that's what we have. We have the dust tight enclosure above, the dust ignition proof enclosure below. So we would have to seal that raceway regardless of its length. Item four, an equivalent combination of those. Go over five feet and down three that might be an equivalent combination over seven down to whatever that might look like. And then item five, electrical ceiling putty. Now it used to mention in an informational note about electrical ceiling putty. Now it clearly says you can use electrical ceiling putty here in the photograph. Uh, this is just a class two location. It's not a class two and a class one location. It's just class two. So instead of those expensive seal fittings, we could have just taken some ceiling putty, stuffed it up there. I mean, look, you can, you can use anything but bubble gum as far as the code is concerned. Electrical ceiling putty, uh, could it be silicone? Yeah, I think so. That's probably a permanent and effective seal, right? Electrical ceiling putty, duct putty, you know, stick some gum in your mouth, chew it up. Yeah, <laughs> maybe not quite that far, but uh, you get the idea. Does not have to be explosion proof. We go way overboard sometimes with class two ceiling. All right, we'll see you on the next video in a rather surprising code change that was added in the 2023. Hope to see you then.